What's up guys, GK here with Corbin's Archery. Today, full on bow build. Starting from scratch, basically, gonna take you through how we're gonna install some new gas strings, install a ham ski, black gold sight, stabilizer, quiver. I'm also gonna show y'all how to install a D-loop and a peep sight as well, just so y'all have just a full breakdown of a total bow build. So, let's get after it. All right, so now we're just gonna put the bow in the press here. Bunch of good presses by Last Chance Archery. This one's obviously the electric one where I have hands free. The pack and go press is good. It has a hand crank. This electric one allows us to easily use our feet and press it. So let's start by taking these strings off. And if you've never installed strings before, highly recommend just doing one string at a time. So do one cable set at a time without taking the whole bow apart or you'll forget kind of where you go. I used to, when I first started doing all this, would video, especially unique bow models since there's a ton of different ones, I'd video exactly how it all went so I knew exactly how to put the strings back on once I replaced them. Just take your time, you're not in a rush. But for this bow build, since I've done a bunch of Matthews in my life that I know exactly kind of how to install them. So what I'm doing first is just removing these cables. And with the newer Matthews, you don't have to take this cable slide out, you can just work the cable through there just like so and if you plan on saving these strings um, as a backup set try not to let them dangle so they don't lose their twist all that stuff same thing for this other cable just gonna work it out voila I'm a little OCD when it comes to restringing bows I don't like a big mess everywhere so I go ahead and just kind of separate my strings so I know which process to go on to next do it however you want. This is kind of how I like to do it. So we got our main string here. And for the phase four, obviously you're gonna have two cables and two yokes. Pretty simple, I'll remove this bottom cam first just because once I install that and install the cable, it'll be the first one that slides into that cable slide. All right, so now I'm just gonna take the screw off that holds the axle. And just a little T-handle wrench helps just to get that axle out. And what I do is just keep my parts to the side here, doing one cam at a time. And voila, you just took the cam off. And I'm gonna take this cable off and hold it up so it doesn't lose any of its twist here. And then we will go into replacing the cable and the yoke. Got the good cable off, twist it back up, put it with the main string. Here comes the yoke, the yoke's off. Now I'm gonna redo and put the new one on. And there's a bunch of different ways. I'm sure everyone kind of restrings their own bow, their own Matthews a little bit differently. This is just the way I found to be most efficient for me. I like to go ahead and get this yoke splitter on there and then lay it in the cam track here. And once I get it, I'll probably pull it snug just to make sure that we're even down here because that's a good way just to make sure that stays nice in the middle. You don't want one side way up on the other. And then I'm just gonna replace it right back into the track in between both top hats. Axle goes back in. And then you get the axle started. Sometimes it gets a little tight. So just give it a light, light taps with the Allen wrench. And then we're gonna screw this back in. And you gotta make sure you line this up pretty straight on the Matthews axles. If it's not going, don't force it. You'll strip it. You'll mess up the thread real easily. Obviously this one's going in easy, so I know I'm on the threads, but if it has any force, just back it out, retry, take your time on it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and install the cable here. With all the Matthews here, you're gonna get this loop end, and then you got your served end that goes around the cam. This looped in here is gonna come up through that yoke. See how I'm coming up through? And then it's gonna, I'm gonna put that other end of the cable through it. And then I'm just gonna pull it through. And then there, you got that tongue going around that cable. And then I'm just gonna work that new cable into that back slot. And then I'm gonna set it to the side for now. I'm not letting it untwist. 
get those guys back on there. Okay, that side's done. Then we'll come to the other side and do the same thing. Unscrew that axle screw. Axles out. And guys, this is the same process I would use on any of the Matthews bows dating back to probably Halon era. Um, Cause they all kind of use the same similar system, maybe a different cable, uh, cable glide or something like that, but pretty much the exact same system here. And again, I go ahead and just put them in the yoke splitter just because I like to get it already in there and get it straight. Lays right back into the track on the cam. Good there. And then just right back in. Uh, be mindful of where your cams go in. Obviously, the main strings you can come over here and latch on here. If you're unsure, that's why I always say take a video of every little detail so you know exactly how it goes. Or you can just remember that the mods on the Matthews are always on the back side of the press. Give that axle a nice little tap. Line the screw up. Okay. And same thing, tongue's gonna go up underneath, cable runs through the middle, and just pulling it through. Cable into the slide. All right, now, I'm just gonna go ahead and put them on the cam. Good there. Good there, and you can see my See, my yokes have come off the tracks here. No big deal. It's just for me pulling some tension on it and it's not being set yet. You can just easily lay them right back down in the tracks until you get your string on it, until you get some tension on it. Lastly is the main string. And they, most string manufacturers will put a little, little piece of serving in between the string there, just kind of tell you what side the peep should go on and split the Split the middle of the string for you. And then lay that on. Tight fit. And guys, so like I have tension on this and this string's obviously not gonna make it. It's fine. I can just press it a little more. Falls on the track there. And then I'm gonna pull up and hold tension just to check everything out. Make sure I like how everything looks. It's also a good time to double check, triple check, quadruple check. Everything's in the track. You wanna make sure your cable's on, everything. There's nothing slightly hanging off because when I put tension on this, everything's just gonna stretch and don't want something to slip off. So everything looks good. I'm gonna slowly back it out. That bow is restrung. Now, before I do anything else, I'm gonna check. You'll always hear me talk about, make sure your bow's in spec. Um, you can do this on the desk. I'd normally just leave it in the press so I don't have to move it. Get your tape measure out. Axle to axle. Should be 33. Let me swap that so you can get it on camera. Money. If I was a little short, or a little long, I should say. Um, I just put some twists in the cables just to make that axle to axle tighter. And then brace height should be six and a half from the middle of the string to the most inward part of the grip, six and a half there. We're good on brace height, we're good on axle to axle. Everything looks good. Now we can start installing our accessories. Highly recommend a October Mountain product bow vise. They are a little on the high side, but they make everything so much easier as far as setting up a bow. Old strings, keep them if they're in good shape. Since this was a brand new bow, it's a good backup set of strings. 
clean up my mess here. Just takes a couple seconds just to have a nice workstation here. So I'm gonna be installing the, uh, the Hamski Epsilon. This is just the universal version. It'll fit on the Matthews. Um, they do make a Matthew specific. The main difference there is one mounts directly in line on the back end. This other one has a little mounting bracket that'll go just on the outside like your normal rest would go. Universal fit on majority of the bows out there now. It'll definitely fit on the new Matthews even though they do make a Matthew specific. So what I typically like to do is to make sure that this cord is nice and stretched out. That's the only downside I would say. Sometimes this cord doesn't come pre-stretched um, and you'll shoot it, I don't know, 20 times or so and you'll rest your kind of kilter up a little bit. So if you got the time, just pull on it, give it a nice stretch. I sometimes put it in the draw board if I have time. Customers are not coming to pick it up till that next day or whatever. I'll put it in the draw board and stretch it out just to get that cord to stretch a little. So with this bracket now, just mounts on the back side. Got our mountain screw here. Snug that down. Um, you can put this felt on the rest. It already comes with a rubber little coating, so I personally don't think you need the felt. Um, for a little bit more quietness, you can add it. For this case, I'm just gonna leave it off. Just normal little rubber that comes on the rest there. And then what I've started doing on the phase fours, just because there's a rubber dampener in between the limbs, I've been cutting the mounting pad that Hamsky sends you in half just because it'll fit on one limb better than both. You can see where I mean, if I would have put that whole one down there, I'd be kind of covering on that rubber part or that whatever texture this dampener is part, and um, it wouldn't stick to that. So instead, I just kind of cut it to where it fit on one limb, just to secure. So how I tie a limb driven on there, I'm gonna go from the outside of the limb to the end of the cable, or into the cam here. Lay it in. And you can definitely just tie it once and be done there. I go ahead and go double just because I have excess cord. Twice around my rubber pad there just for an added consistency. And then I'm gonna go into this little gap that I've made, pull it down. And then I'm gonna go back the other way and through this hole and snug it down. And then I can move this cable to the center here just like so. Get you on this side. So you can see that knot I've made kind of looks, once I cut and burn this strand, this tag in here, it'll look just like a D-loop knot would right there. And that's gonna hold our rest in place. Be careful on cutting. So since I haven't tightened that yet, I can now move this knot away from all the strings because you always wanna be mindful where you're burning. And then you just want to burn that into a little ball like you would on your D-loop. Always be careful where your flame could be pointing. I move this to the side so that flame's going up and away from my strings. And then just let that ball up a little bit. And then I'll move that knot back to the center of the limb. Just so it's in the middle of the pad there. And then I'm just going to hold down my knot and pull up on that cable. Now she's tight. Good little D-loop knot on there, ready to go. So I got my rest done. Next thing I'm gonna do is install a D-loop. And if you don't have, have this measured out, I run about four and seven eighths, maybe, maybe five, just depending on your material. This is the uh, BCY 24 D-loop material. I want to say the 23 is a little bit slimmer, but to me it stretches a little bit more, so the measurement's off a little bit. And then you just want to fluff this ball out really, really well. That way it burns up into a nice little ball. Fluff it out just like so. And I'm going to take my lighter and just kind of light that up. Get into a nice little ball there. Balls are fine. You see a lot of guys flatten them. As long as you don't over flatten, it's fine. I still got a big ring there as far as this lip. I don't know if you can get that clear enough, but 
Still have a lip to where it's gonna hold my D-loop, it's not gonna pull through. Some guys really smash them down and flatten them way too much. And that, this D-loop material, once it's burned, it can kind of crisp. And if it's too thin, that D-loop will just pull right out. So then I'm gonna do the same on the other side. Melt it into a nice little ball. So, and you can dip it in water to cool it down. Grab an arrow. It's important to know what arrow you're shooting to as far as for the knock size around the D-loop so you don't have too much knock pinch. All right, so then I'm gonna run my arrow through. And then I'll take my string level, tighten that down. and get it to where more of my string is level here. I'll go ahead and measure my arrow if I can get it somewhat close already. That does help save a little bit of time. All right, so this is how I tie a D-loop. Um, I got my burnt ends here, burnt ends on the side. I got my loop here. I go around the string, tuck them both through, pull them through, and then I'm gonna pull it here, top knot on top there, and I'm just gonna pull it snug. Make sure my arrow is nice and level still. And then I'm gonna take my tag end and I go around the back side, through the loop, pull it up, and then I'm gonna to come towards me, around the back side again. And then that knot is there. So now I got a knot facing that way and a knot facing this way. Now I'm good, I just need my pliers to cinch it up. We'll make sure that arrow's level first. So I got my arrow level here. Good rule of thumb is make sure that middle of that shaft is running perfectly level through that burger hole. Um, and then I can also parallel it to the shelf here. It's just a good rule of thumb to start. These are some Easton D-loop knocking pliers. Really like them because they spread out wide and then you can really squeeze to press out that D-loop. Just like so. And then I'm just gonna squeeze to tighten. And then I don't all the way tighten it just yet. I come back over here, and this is just something I do because I'm OCD. I like to pull that little thing down over the knot itself. Voila, so that knot is good there. And then I kind of leave it untight right now because I'm about to install a peep. And then with that peep sight, it's easier to go ahead and just rotate the string, give it a twist if I need to, just to get that peep centered straight in the string. And then I can tighten down that D-loop so then it won't rotate. So back in the press, take my peep sight. We just use the P38 painted series, just your basic peep sight. 3 16th is what we normally run. And then I'm just gonna spread that string out. You can take that out if you want or you can leave it. And then I'm gonna just install that peep. And when you're installing a peep, guys, it's, if you see here, they got grooves. You see that groove angling down from my, you know, 11 o'clock, say three o'clock, it's angling down this way. That side is gonna go on my left side of the string, just like so, because you want that peep side angling out towards you. Once I got it in, Make sure everything's in the track. Okay, you see how this peep already twists towards me? So here's a good way to fix that. The string's already wanting to rotate back to how it was made, called that string memory. With that string memory, it's just wanting to rotate the other way. I mean, see, it's taking nothing to rotate it this way. So what I'm gonna do is just press that already. And I'm gonna just go ahead and swap it around, flip it around, and just angle it up. Don't fight that string. If it's wanting to spin back and go back to where it was originally twisted up in the factory, don't fight it. Just twist that peep since it's not tied in. My D-loop is on the bottom side here though. And this is why I don't tighten all the way yet because I can just go ahead and swivel that D-loop around. Get it straight. Get it where I like it. That'll solve a lot of your peep rotation right there just with, just with the install. All right, so everything's in the track. Everything's good. I'm now going to tighten up this rest. And this is kind of a 
another little thing that I'm OCD about. See this string dampener on the hamskies? They perform better when this rubber tube is down closest to the bottom. It'll just help with a little bit of string. Vibration, string sound. So I'm just going to give myself all the slack I need because I want it as close to that bottom limb as possible. And just work it back up. And then I'm just gonna pull that tight. Snug it down. And what most guys do, they can tie this all the way around. I normally just tie a little knot to where it won't slip out of this little hole here, this little clasp, and burn it. I mean, I'm not gonna do anything else with that rest anymore, not with a, not with a ham ski, so. All right, next we're gonna install the black gold dual track. Personal favorite of mine because I'm not a big horizontal pin guy. I don't like all the clutter. Um, same exact kind of build as the black gold ascent verdict, just different pin configuration. And since this is a Matthews, I don't need the dovetail mount. I can just run it, run it right through the bridge lock there since it's a black gold dovetail mount. Bridge lock screw out of the package. Another tip guys, if you're doing this at home, go with, go with finger threading the screw first, just to get it started, just to make sure there's no paint on those threads and then you could actually have a, a misthread issue. Go ahead and finger tighten it. On this one, I'm gonna run it on that second mountain hole on the dovetail, exactly right there. And then we'll just tighten her down. Save that bracket that comes with the black gold for you know, if you ever need it for another bow, mountain screws are in there. It's gonna come with your sight tapes with feet per second. And that's done. Now we just need to level out our sight. So I'm gonna get my string level first. String level. Bar here is pretty level. It's maybe on that left side. Just have to break these open. I don't have to take the screw all the way out. Um, what's cool about the dual track is they have a micro adjust for this axis on the side here. So all I have to do is open that up and then I can just give it a little turn on that micro adjust screw here until I'm dead in the middle up there. So now I'm level here, here, and here, but then you can see my sight bubble it's way over to the left. I'm gonna go ahead and snug this down so these axes are good. And then what's neat about the black gold stuff is I can just adjust just the sight bubble just by loosening these two little screws. And what that's allowing me to do is just move this whole sight ring because the bubble's connected to that sight ring. It's just allowing me to just move the sight ring and adjust the bubble that way. All right, so now that I got it, I'm gonna bring it right back up. And then I'm just gonna slide that till the bubble's dead in the middle. String's good, sight bar axis is good, sight bubble's good. And you can pretty much finger tighten these little, little guys so that bubble stays in place. And then come back with your Allen wrench and snug it down so that sight bubble doesn't move. I'll take that off, everything's good. Now it's just for the little accessories to be added on and then we'll check our peep sight. All good there. So everything's good here. I'm gonna go ahead, that peep sight's good where I want it. I'm gonna go ahead, snug it down. And there you go, you got your D-loop. D-loop's good, we tie in that peep. But I'm gonna make sure timing's good. And this is, what is this one called? Archery Tooling Corporation, quick draw board. Um, mounts directly to the wall as you can tell. Pretty awesome draw board. So I'm looking to see these mod screws if they're gonna be hitting the exact same time on the, ca on the cable. So my top one is hitting. It just now connected. My bottom one is slightly behind. Let me see that, just slightly off. So in order to fix that, my top cam is ahead. So I'm gonna put, just based on that gap, I'm gonna put half a twist into this top cable 
and that will slow down that top cam, which should, in theory, let that bottom cam catch up and they should be timed exactly right. So just a half twist towards me, putting the twist into that cable, back in the track. Okay guys, very important, since I just took that ca cable off, I'm gonna slow down, check everything, make sure we're in the track. There we go. Just double check everything. Let's see here. Bottom one is now hitting. Top one hitting. Let me back it up. Double check. Top one's hitting. Bottom one's hitting. Perfect. Those cams are perfectly in time. That bow is just about ready. What I'm going to do now is tie in the peep. There's a bunch of different ways to tie in a peep sight, guys. Everyone's different. I'm just going to go over. I'm gonna go over that five times, then I'm gonna serve it back in four, five times. I'm gonna snug it down. And I'm gonna start to go over again, but then I'm gonna make a loop here, bring this around, and then I'm serving it the other way. And then once I've done it five, six, seven times, just depending, I'm gonna lay my tag end right back over where that first one was, and then I'm just gonna take this loop and serve it over that tag end cord until I get to that last one. Then I'm just going to pull it tight. Pull it tight, just like so. And then we're going to burn it. Also, guys, be careful of the string. Be careful of air blowing. Be careful of Ian breathing on it. You gotta watch that flame at all times here. So there, bottom side's done. Now I'm gonna go around the peep itself, land in the groove, and I go once, twice, and then I pull it tight. Snug that down, and then I got my tag ends. I'm gonna go underneath, once, twice, and pull it back up. Snug it, and then I'm gonna end up back up top again, once, twice. And you can get some D-loop pliers or some needle nose and really snug that down. Burn that end off. Burn that end off. Then I'm gonna come to this top part, do the exact same thing I did on the bottom. One, two, three, four, and five. Three, four, and five. Snug it down. And again, coming over towards y'all, I'm just gonna wrap around, hold my loop here. One, two, three, four, and five. Lay that back. Serve over that tag in. The amount of times doesn't really matter, guys. Just do it evenly so it doesn't look, you don't have an inch of serving over here and an eighth of an inch over here. What I'll do is make sure that serving slid up tight. Then I'm going to burn my tag in. There. And you notice how I'm always rotating that string so that flame's not ever going towards the main string. Lastly, I'm gonna add my quiver. And installing a Matthews quiver is very, very simple. It's just two piece here. You can see where they've machined out this little piece. Fits there. You get your 3 16th Allen wrench. Screw that in. Screw that in. 
And I'm just gonna slide it on in there. Lock it up. And there you have it. Complete phase 433 rebuild, ready to rock and roll. Now it just needs to be shot, tuned, and go hunting. All right, guys, that was a complete restring and total bow build video. Next, what we have to do is tune this with the customer and he'll be ready to go out and hunt. But if you guys like this video or you had any questions about our tuning, um, check out our tuning video. That'll be linked down here. And you can go check that out. We tune through a whole bow and kind of walk you through how we tune the, uh, tune the bow up to our process. But this bow is ready to go. If you guys have any other ideas, comment down below. If you guys want a bow build or have any questions, hit us up on Instagram, comment, call the shops, whatever you need us to do. Um, let us know what other videos we should do and just make sure you like and subscribe. Thanks guys. Me.